Planet Dolan. Who made a literal inflatable airplane in the 1950s and tried to sell it as a military plane? What plane from the 1920s was able to fly with 9 wings and over 32 tons of weight? From flying boats to personal lifting devices, here are 15 of the most bizarre airplane designs that actually kind of worked. Hey there, I'm Hellbent. I'm here to learn you suspiciously amazing facts that I didn't just make up. Number 15. The Aerodyne Alexander Lipschitz Aerodyne was a novel idea. It just sort of looks like a giant turbine with a tail, and that's sort of what it is. The idea behind it was to create an airplane that could fly without wings, and it actually worked. The unmanned vehicle had a successful test flight in 1972, but the project was cancelled due to a lack of interest from the Western German government. Number 14. The Spruce Goose the H-4 Hercules was originally designed to be a massive transatlantic transport ship during World War II. It was created to solve two major problems, wartime shortages of metal and the deadly efficiency of German U-boats against Allied transports. So the H-4 Hercules was made almost entirely out of wood. That's how it got the nickname Spruce Goose, even though nearly the entire aircraft is made from birch wood, not spruce. The intention was for it to be an aquatic transport craft that could act either as a boat or plane, but only the prototype was created and its short test flight wasn't until after the war. Number 13. Lockheed P-791 This is a hybrid airship slash airplane meant to combine the hauling capacity and lift of a blimp with the speed of a straight line aircraft. And this one is fairly recent, with its first flight taking place in January of 2006. Lockheed originally designed the craft for a US Army contract, but lost out on that contract, so now it's working on making the craft commercially available. Number 12. Namith Parasol The Namith Parasol was another aircraft that never made it past the prototype stage, but its test flight showed it to be rather impressive. During the test flight, the pilot stalled the engine in midair, letting the large circular wing on top take over the steering. This allowed him to glide it to a soft, parachute-like, near-vertical landing. Despite the plane working as advertised, it was never mass-produced. Number 11. Blom and Voss BV-141 so, no matter how weird an airplane gets, there is one thing you always tend to assume about it. Generally, you always expect horizontal symmetry. This World War II era German aircraft said not nah to that. The Blom and Voss BV-141 was intended as a recon plane, with its plexiglass cockpit intended for maximum visibility. Number 10. Lockheed XFV one of the biggest limitations of fixed-winged aircraft has always been the need for a runway. As a result of this limitation, there have been countless attempts at creating a plane with vertical takeoff ability but with the speed of a fixed-winged plane. The XFV, also known as the Salmon, was one attempt at this. However, it was extremely difficult to fly, especially transitioning from its straight-line flying mode to its hovering mode. It was also significantly slower than other modern planes of the time, so only one prototype was ever completed. Number 9. Curtis Wright VZ-7 the idea behind the VZ-7 was to have a so-called flying jeep. It was a helicopter with four uncovered rotors and an exposed pilot. The craft was easy to fly and fairly maneuverable in test flights, but didn't meet US Army standards, so it was retired in 1960. Number 8. Goodyear Inflatoplane you probably know Goodyear is the company that makes car tires, right? Well, in 1956, they tried their hand at making one of them newfangled flying machines. But they figured it would be a good idea if, you know, the plane was inflatable. You know, like a car tire. The thing is, they actually did it. They made an inflatable plane that was able to blow up with air and take to the skies. Goodyear tried to sell the design to the army, but they rejected it because, in their exact words, they didn't have a valid valid military use for an aircraft that could be brought down by a well-aimed bow and arrow. Number 7. McDonnell XF-85 Goblin The Goblin is a weird-shaped plane that had a very specific use. 
It was to be deployed from the belly of a long-range bomber to protect it from intercepting fighters outside of the range of a traditional escort fighter. It would deploy from the bomber, engage hostile aircraft, and then redock using a hook in the plane's nose. Problem is, its capabilities made it no real threat to sophisticated traditional fighters, and it was practically impossible to get the redocking to work properly, so the design was scrapped and sent to museums. Number 6. Caproni CA-60 Like the Spruce Goose, the Caproni CA-60 was intended to be a transatlantic transport vehicle, though the Caproni was not intended for wartime transportation. Unlike the Spruce Goose, this thing had a total of 9 wings and weighed more than 16 tons. It actually had a successful, albeit short, maiden flight, but on the second test flight, the pilot tried to lift off a little more off the water, and the added stress caused the entire thing to tear itself apart. Number 5. The Flying Pancake the Vought V-173 was an experimental craft built in 1942, which quickly gained the nickname Flying Pancake for obvious reasons. By converting essentially the entire craft into one giant wing, the plane had greater maneuverability and an incredibly strong frame. In fact, the plane's body was so strong it sustained virtually no damage even when flipping over onto its back during an emergency landing on a beach. Number 4. Convair Sea Dart We've already seen a couple of planes that wanted to be so-called flying boats. This is a more extreme version of that. The Convair Sea Dart was a jet fighter that was also a jet ski. As yet another idea to compensate for the difficulty of takeoff and landing at sea without the use of an aircraft carrier, the Sea Dart was designed as an aquatic craft that could take off and land on the water itself. It sort of worked, but it underperformed in the air and they couldn't compensate for the violent vibrations during takeoff and landing. Still, during a test flight in the 1950s, the plane was able to do a shallow dive under the water while maintaining a speed of Mach 1. That makes it still, to this day, the only supersonic underwater plane ever built. Number 3. Model 281 Proteus the Scaled Composites Proteus is one of the few aircraft we've talked about that is actually still in service. It was originally designed as a highly efficient platform for long-range missions and to investigate how aircraft can be used as telecommunication relays. It has the ability to fly up to 65,000 feet above sea level for as much as 18 hours at a time and can be flown either in person by two pilots or remote controlled from the ground. Number 2. Bartini Beria VVA-14 There's no getting around it. This just looks like a prop from Star Wars. But like, not one of the really famous ships, it looks more like one of those second-tier ships that only dedicated fans know the names of. Still, this is the Bartini Beria VVA-14, and it's seriously the last amphibious craft on this list. I promise. It was designed with pontoons underneath for water landing and could even taxi in the water. Eventually, it was intended to be equipped with powerful engines that would give it vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, but designer Robert Bartini died before that was implemented, and the project was eventually scrapped. Number 1. De Lackner Aerocycle You think some of these planes have looked like death traps? Well, listen here. None of these things have been on the same level of death trap as stand on a tiny platform above an active helicopter rotor. Meet the DeLackner HZ-1 Aerocycle, a personal helicopter that the US Army actually liked enough to order 12 of. As if it didn't already look dangerous enough, this thing's intended purpose was to act as a reconnaissance machine. As in, not only were people expected to fly this thing without dying, but also scout out enemy positions and not get shot. The project was mercifully cancelled after it proved too difficult for untrained soldiers to control, and a malfunction caused two crashes during testing. Though, to be fair, the pilot actually did survive the crashes, somehow. What? Don't you don't. Did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.